Hello and welcome to my fourth guide in this series. For today's guide I'll be going over the seamen and how to play them the most effectively. This guide will be split up into parts that way you can take tips one step at a time. First things first I just want to point out that a lot of things that I say in this video I have already explained in my line infantry guide video. This is mostly because the seamen and line infantry are very, very similar classes and the only major difference they have are their different types of guns. Seamen have shotguns and line infantry have guns that fire in a straight line. So after you're done watching this video, I would recommend watching my line infantry guide as well since you will learn a lot from that video too. Next, I have a discord server. My discord server is a safe haven where you can talk to other players and me about any questions, suggestions, post art, give me ideas for videos, and I even announce when I open my custom server and just release videos. Lastly, a side note, the game's version is currently in version 0.11.7c and things may be subject to change and this video may become outdated in the future. That out of the way, now let's start with our first tip. Alright, so for starters, you should know your place. Seamen are typically backline and frontline fighters. Backlining, since your guns are very powerful and can help the team a lot just by shooting special zombies or taking out big hordes. And frontlining, just in case your team needs some extra help in the front. Overall, the Seaman is a pretty situational class and you need to adapt to how your team needs you. Are there a lot of people fighting in the front? Then stay back and shoot at the barrels or igniters. If there isn't really anyone frontlining, you should go help. Now, let's move on to how to use your guns. So for our first gun, we will be talking about the Blunderbuss. This weapon is basically a shotgun with a spread which can take out a big horde very easily. However, this gun is pretty bad at long ranges and is only reliable at short to medium ranges. It shoots 15 pellets per shot and each pellet deals 30 damage for a total of 450 damage. And the gun has a reload of 10.66 seconds, making it pretty much the same reload time as a musket. There are usually two ways you can use this gun, the first being that you can sit in the back lines and take care of crowds of zombies that push too far, or you can shoot special zombies, and the second being you frontlining the majority of the time and only shooting your gun when the zombies are pushing too far. Overall, the Blunderbuss is an amazing gun and it's very useful on pretty much every objective and endless map. Oh boy, time to talk about one of the most controversial weapons in the entire community. Whether you like this gun or not, I'm going to talk about it, and if you want to argue in the comments about whether it's good or not, go ahead. So, first off, the knockgun has a piercing of 11 and each individual pellet deals a whopping 250 damage, meaning if you fire all 7 shots, you're dealing 1750 damage with 77 piercing. Lastly, the reload to load all 7 pellets takes a rough 26 seconds, with the longest reload time in the entire game. Now when you're hearing this, you're probably thinking to yourself, where in the world will you ever need 77 piercing and the ability to deal that much damage? And with its horrendous reload time, this gun has to be literally useless. And to that I would say, you're correct, there's nowhere where you would need to deal that much damage or need that much piercing, ever. But what if I told you, you don't need to load all 7 bullets. That's right, you can load one pellet, which only takes 11 seconds, and it pierces 11 zombies and also deals 250 damage. Pretty much, no matter where you are on an objective map, you will one-tap the zombies with just one pellet. Also, it's sometimes good to load two or three pellets in the case you think you're gonna hit more zombies or you're about to shoot a zapper, Overall, the knockgun can be a direct upgrade from the blunderbuss, but sometimes the blunderbuss can be better at wiping out a big horde instead of taking out a big line of zombies like a musket. Alright, so I've gone over how to use the saber in pretty much every other guide I've made, so this one will just be a quick review of that. If you want more information about your saber, please go watch my line infantry video as it goes more in depth with it. So first, your side swings. Your side swings swing at relatively an average rate and it aims at zombies' heads, letting you wipe out big crowds of zombies fast 
because of the consistent headshots you will be landing. Another thing to note is that you should always be using this behind sapper barricades since you're at no danger of runners or zappers making this the most effective horde clearer. And second, your downswing. This swing is primarily used for taking out runners since it swings fast and has a long range, but you can also use this swing to kite zombies and take out big hordes at a safer distance because of its extended reach. Next we're going to be talking about the Hand Axe. Now I want to point out I know I didn't go over the Hand Axe in my Line Infantry Guide, mostly because I didn't know that it got buffed recently. For those unaware, the Hand Axe used to have a downside where Zappers had a 54.5% resistance to each Hand Axe swing. This means you would only be dealing 24.5 damage, assuming you hit the Zapper's body. But as of this recent update, that resistance is completely gone, and the Hand Axe has become way more powerful now. It also has a new powerful upswing which aims directly at the zombies' heads. This weapon deals 45 damage, meaning it will two-shot pretty much any zombie you come across. The only glaring downside I see with this weapon is that it's a bit harder to deal with runners since you don't have the downstab of a saber. Also, the hitbox is centered on the axe's blade and nowhere else, meaning that it can sometimes be janky and hit through zombies or just miss completely because of it. The other downside with this weapon is that it's very difficult to hit headshots with your left and right swings. This means that the saber does actually have an advantage over the hand axe if you prefer to hit headshots. But the hand axe's upside is more overall damage, so this is really up to you on whether or not you prefer the hand axe or the saber. Both weapons are pretty balanced and both have their advantages. Gapping aside now, how do you actually use this weapon? Well first, if you are ever having to deal with a zapper or a runner, I would highly suggest using your upswing. This will almost always hit the zapper's head, and it's centered, meaning it's very good against runners. Of course, the downside of using this against runners is that its swing speed is a bit slow, making it difficult to deal with multiple runners. Next, your side swings. Both of your side swings will be your primary swings and are super effective against large groups of zombies. Now, something I know people are going to start commenting on is that you can hit headshots with both of your side swings. But it's very, very inconsistent, and you usually have to have the zombies angled directly on your right or your left for it to work. The only other thing about the side swing is that you should study how its hitbox and range is. This isn't really something I can teach and is just more learnt over time since the range of the hand axe is pretty short and the hitbox sometimes can feel a bit inconsistent. Hey mobile users, yeah, you, I see you watching this. Guess what? Seaman can actually help fight instead of backlining the whole time. I know this is a revolutionary concept and I know you never want to ever be in the front line with your teammates and set sit comfortably in the back shooting like two zombies, but what if I told you by doing that you could actually indirectly be a liability to your team? Now hold on, first things first, don't get me wrong, it's perfectly fine to backline when it's the appropriate time to. Picture this alright, you and maybe like three other people being a sapper, a line infantry, and a chaplain, I guess, just got done with the part on San Sebastian where you blow up the crates and lower the hay bale. Since there aren't many of you left, and you need a fair amount of people to hold off the village for a good minute, maybe it'd be a better idea to frontline since the chaplain is weak, and the line infantry and sapper probably can't do this part alone. If you sit in the back the whole time, it's very likely the other three will eventually get overwhelmed and you all will perish. So. What do you take away from this exactly? Just fight when there aren't many others fighting, or if your team needs help since zombies are pushing too far. There's never really a bad time to frontline. Hey again mobile players, did you know that shooting barrels near people kills people? Oh, wait, you didn't? Uh, excellent, L let me teach you how to not do this thing. So, when there's a barrel nearby, you need to think about this. Is there any person nearby that may get too close and get blown up when I shoot it? If the answer is yes, put the gun down and just stop. There are no buts, there are no ifs, if someone is near, just stop. 
This is not a joke. However, if the answer is no, then go ahead and shoot it. Also, you need to understand how far the barrel's explosion radius is. This is something that you will learn over time and I can't exactly teach. So, once you start to understand the barrel's explosion radius, you'll understand more and more when it's safe to shoot a barrel if people are near. Lastly, you'll need a good reaction time for shooting barrels. Sometimes a teammate, despite not trying to get too close to it, might spring up and lure the barrel right as you're about to shoot it. This isn't fully your fault, but you still need to understand that this happens and you need to be ready for when it does. If you can't tell yet, this is going to be one of the most reoccurring tips I give in all my guides since it's pretty important. Anyway, yes, I'm encouraging you to be a hero. For the seaman, this is a little bit different since you're usually backlining. Basically, if you see someone get grabbed by a few shamblers and nobody's in reach to save them, you should probably shoot the zombies off of them and go help if they need more. Also, I'll include here that you should prioritize shooting igniters in spots where there aren't any barrels. Igniters will devastate your team and by shooting them, you will be saving your team a lot of pain. And of course, if you're frontlining, you need to keep your ears perked up for any sound of someone getting tackled by a runner or getting grabbed by a shambler, because a lot of people will shockingly miss people like that. Now let's go over everything we've learned. First, you're typically a backline fighter who specializes in taking out big hordes, barrels, and igniters. You have the ability to frontline and you should if your team needs you to. And lastly, you should know when to shoot a barrel. While I will admit I do not play the seaman very often, I do acknowledge how useful they can be if they are played correctly, and you should try them out if you haven't before. But that's really all for this guide. Make sure to join my Discord server which will be linked in the description of this video. As I mentioned at the start of this video, I and everyone else there can answer any big questions you have, you can give me ideas for videos, or just come hang out and talk with us. I also run a custom server which I will show the name of on screen now. Here I do fun custom made events, examples being build to survive zombies, escort the logs, and other fun random stuff I'm pretty sure no other server owner has thought of before. Also, people in my discord server will get to know the moment it opens. But that's all for this. I hope you learned something from this guide. Have fun playing the seaman!